here on Brick Ship Earth. Ah, we're gonna hang out and do a little bit of Lego tonight. I got it going on on both channels right now. Whoa, it's the illusion reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. Figured it was time to uh, relax a little bit. A tense day in the United States of America. And um, I figured we just need a little bit of, of simplicity on this one. So I had this uh, Lego set that I bought from uh, my first post lockdown purchase from an independent business plush toy so shop over in Simi Valley run by John. And, uh, and I just picked this one out cause I wanted to support him, his business and, uh, get him off his feet and started. We were the first customers after the, uh, the restrictions on toy stores were lifted. So I thought instead of going on a rant about the situations on Spaceship Earth or the COOF or the truths or the situation, I thought I would honor George Floyd with some, some peaceful meditations and building that seems to be a uh, Destruction seems to be the flavor of the uh, of the of the time right now, and uh, I've always found that it's harder to build something than it is to destroy something. And the simplest thing to build right now is just a Lego set and um, just just mellow out, man. Bring the uh, bring the level down because uh, apparently we got a lot of work to do. We absolutely have a bunch of work to do as a society, as individuals, as communities, as families. It's a stressful time. I get it, and um, it's you know as above so below. It's uh, it's just as stressful here on the. Uh, all right, Cam W. Whoa, it's the illusion reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. That was the uh, a doubler, a doubler for you. But I don't have any. Uh, I need to get my my knife. Just one second. Yeah, so uh, I think it's been a, a rough, rough day all the way around on a certain level. I know it has been here just on the home front. It's difficult being a husband and a father. There's a lot going on, man, and uh, it's not easy. Life, life can be not easy, but that doesn't mean we... Uh, we give up, right? So uh, we're like I said, we're just gonna mellow out, do a little bit of Lego, chill. I have my live stream going on the Lego channel as well. So I got dual live streams going on here. And yeah, it's a lot, man. I, I think there's one thing that, that I don't like, I don't like destruction I don't really like violence it's uh it's all it's all been uh going on the last couple of days I'm yeah I don't I do not like the brutal hands of the police I think we have a lot of work to do as a community man so I think uh I think right now we just relax dude bring some calm calm to it man and uh, let's let's not get serious. So let's uh, let's just build some Lego, dude. We got this uh, this set here. It's uh, Moloch Land Speeder. I think I saw this movie. It's the the solo one. 
Thank you, Adam Rush. Yeah, we all need to just chill out, dude. We all need to bring it down just a bunch of notches right now. And, uh, yeah, so it's Mollick's Land Speeder, 464 pieces. The set number is 75210. And, uh, you know, I don't really know what it is. Like I said, I just got it off the shelf to support John at the, uh, the plush toy store. So uh, here we go. Does it look, looks like it's got some trippy features. Looks like there's a little animal carrier in there and whatnot. You know, tripped a lot about, about Legos, man. I really think if we take the, the Lego template and apply it to the world as a whole, we might be able to pull this whole thing off is, you know, I got a bunch of this stuff right there. It's, uh, there's the Millennium Falcon. There's the, uh, the Saturn rocket. There's the Ninjago city. There's that VW bus bug in the corner. It's all made with the same parts. Again, that's why I think I like Lego so much is I'm making some random spaceship. It's all made with the same pieces. And I think that's, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the nature of humanity too. The nature of our universe, the nature of God's gift to us is, is the perfect analogy for our reality is the Lego brick system. It all does snap together and can be rearranged into uh, different forms and formats. And you can create stuff following instructions. You can create fantasy builds. You can create abstract stuff. You can be a five-year-old boy and create whatever you want to call it. And um, so for me, I just find it very relaxing just to kind of tune out with these, these bricks and kind of disappear into them. I'm not really that concerned about the end result. I just like disappearing into the build, if you know what I mean. Got a little instruction manual here and uh, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's just hang out and let's, let's just chill a notch and let's just all relax. It's been a, it's been a long couple days, I think. And I think anyone who doesn't realize why it's has been a long couple days is maybe lucky. I don't know, man. It's been a long couple months, man. This, this is 2020 has been a tough year, people. It came in strong. I, th I had nothing but high hopes for 2020, man. But uh, I think the first day of 2020, I was sick. I think I might have had the coof on New Year's. I think on New Year's Day, I was, was ill. So whatever. Maybe that set the tone for 2020. 2020, the year of the dumpster file. But we can restart over right now. We can start over any day we want and begin to build anew and empower ourselves. So uh, what's happening? One Sean Bond from Saskatchewan. Let's re reboot this. Yeah, Lars Palm. Let's reboot this thing. Kimmy. And uh, let's reboot. I think we can do it, man. You know, I, I, uh, I just, I guess I'm, I'll, ch I'll chit chat and build. How about we do that? How about we chit chat and build? There it all is. I can't really read the comments that well because I can't see them that that well. But we'll just chit chat and build. You know, I, th I think, I mean, I don't know about you. I saw the level of anger last night in Minneapolis and it, 
it alarmed me, man. I get why people are pissed, man. I, I truly do. And I think one of the one of the alarming things about the anger is people's I'll tell you the one thing that I've noticed watching the uh the riots the last couple days. Especially I've been following this young kid on uh GQ. GQ live from uh live from Minneapolis. He's a local kid there, young black man. And he's been filming, doing live streams from uh from Minneapolis and just in the trenches of it all. And the one thing I, I noticed is is it's a mixed crowd. It's not just look at I don't know who that is. I guess that's Moloch. He's mini figured up. And then uh we got this thing, his little I don't know what this is, ugly little dog. A rough, ugly little dog. But his dog is is the crowd at least is biracial. I mean, if there's any sort of one thing I noticed in in Minneapolis is is when you watch the footage on the streets, there is not a uh there it's not segregated. It is it, that is a plus. I mean, I, I can't see, I, I know it's a very, ab, I do try to always look at the positives in the thing, but the, there's not, it's not like there's white people being targeted or any racial thing going on within the thing. There's just definitely a displeasure with the police. And I, and I and I think I'm right there with it. I, I didn't like the way this, this thing happened with the, uh, the coof. I didn't like the lockdown. The lockdown I thought was was definitely an overreach. And so Yeah, maybe maybe we needed to maybe the police needed to have their force checked. I don't know if it's going to do anything in in the long run. We'll see. We'll see, but I get why people are are mad. I really do. And it's not I don't I, I don't think there's any need to make this a black and white issue. I think if you live in this country, you understand the raw deal that that our fellow citizens have gotten on a lot of these issues. And um, I think we empathize. I think we've all, I don't know about you, I, I've seen the uh, overreach of the police. I don't, I think the police are out of control, so... But I don't like seeing destruction. I, I, I know there's this weird thing they're going on is, you know, lives are more important than buildings. But communities, the backbone of life, like if we don't build up our communities, I don't see how we fix anything. Like I'm a firm believer the hardest part of life is, is building stuff. It's super hard to build things in life. It takes patience, determination. And so when I see this, this thing, I think it distresses me. I, I, I really do. I, it, 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 it kind of, it bums me out in a way. I mean, not in a way, it bums me out because Ultimately, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I think, see, that's what I'm saying. It's hard to build stuff. I don't even know if I'm doing this thing right, right off the bat. I'm not, I'm already, I'm already blowing it, making mistakes. Let me see, I gotta redo this. I guess what I'm saying is I'm a believer, man. I, I, I'm a believer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm a believer. I really am. I could sit here and rant about the politics of it all, but I just want to build here and be a believer, man. You see, if I don't, if I don't pick up this, these blocks right now and start building something, anything, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to feel defeated and, and we don't want to feel defeated. You know, yesterday, you know, I felt powerless about what was going on, you know, I knew, I knew what was coming. I, you could, you could feel it coming 
pretty far off. And I just went and picked up trash on the side of the highway, dude. Like, I just think there's a certain element. It's like we need to, like, take care of our, like, our world. And we can't wait for someone to, to lead us to do it. Like, we have to be the ones to step up and, and clean up our, our beaches, our communities, our law enforcement agencies, our governments. I think there's just this thing of everybody's waiting around for someone else to do it. And it's, if we're going to wait around for someone else to do it, we're going to be waiting forever. And the time is now. The time is now. I, I, I really do. If we don't seize this time right now, hmm. We're making a giant mistake. You know, I was thinking a lot about this scene that was going on. And there was plen there's was there been plenty of time to, to fix the system. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe as much as I don't believe in destruction, maybe these people are right. Maybe, maybe they've, they've been just given a deaf ear so long that, uh, the way the only way they could get attention to their situation was to uh was to burn it all down that's an extreme extreme way to to fix a problem but i do understand it on a level man i i do understand the frustration but then again i i go i go it it Look, they're getting ready to build the skate park, right? The temporary skate park. Like, it's actually being assembled as we speak right now. And that took nine years. Like, I was down at City Hall for nine years trying to get that skate park built. And there were times, there was, there was periods where we got real close, and then it fell apart, and then... The political climate changed and blah, blah, blah. And there were definitely periods of defeat and, you know, running for city council to, to get it built. And just, you know, all the effort that went in to try to get a skate park built. And, and it seemed like a never, it was never going to happen. But, you know, I think pretty soon we're going to be skating in our community and I guess it just goes to show is, is like, yeah, if you don't want to put in the time and the work to fix and change something, it's never going to change. Like, I, I, get, I get the anger, I get the frustration. But I've, I just know from my own experience, anger and frustration has never accomplished anything in my life. Like realistically it's never done anything for me except cause me to be stagnant i think anger and frustration are very st are are stagnant energies and and it's easy to get stuck there so yeah i i i remember getting angry a bunch of times about trying to build the skate park and, and getting shot down and battling and then, you know, realizing that I think the only way that it ultimately got done was when I stopped being angry about it and I started being diplomatic about it. I mean, maybe I grew up. Maybe having a, a, being a, being a father taught me everything about having patience and, 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 you know, not giving up and not letting it, it overwhelm me, right? It's, I, I mean, that's, again, it's right, like I was saying the other day, is, is the, uh, the key to everything is, is, is fathers in the home, is, is fathers raising their children, dude, because it's not only the children it's important for, it's, it's the father that it's important for, too. The father gains more than maybe the child by raising the children, right? Because in order to raise a child, you have to you have to give up your selfish desires. You have to give up your angers and your frustrations, and you have to actually be there for your for your child and and raise them and and overcome your own 
character defects, if you will. I mean, I just I just look at look at the whole thing as as like yeah, if we're if we're gonna change anything in this society, that's the one thing I think that we actually can change for real is is showing up and being parents to our children. It's gnarly. They don't want to listen. I got a, I got a teenager, man. She don't want to listen to anything I have to say. And it and it and it makes you want to quit and give up and throw up your hands and go, oh my God. In fact, it makes you want to burn it all down, dude. It makes you want to burn it all down. And then you sit there and you sit there and you realize that 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 yeah, you are the gas can, you are the match, you are the, the thing, and 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 the only thing you can do is not burn it down. That's where the grace comes in. That's where that's where you learn being a parent is you can't run away from it. You can't turn your back because it got difficult. That 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 is the moment where you have to show up and and take stock of who you are as a human being and and determine your value is not your own personal wants and needs but your value is is the wants and needs of a small child looking to you for guidance and and growth and leadership and yeah it's hard man it is it is so hard staying in in a marriage staying connected as a father and, and overriding your own desires to, to just have it be easy, to have it be easy. And, and so, yeah, you look at, you look at, you look at the state of, of, you look at the state of things and you're like, Isn't that the one thing we can do? Isn't that the one thing we can, where we can start as a society to fix the wrongs of, of everything is r raise our children? Like, like seriously, like raise our children? It's funny, it's, uh, there's been a, a definite, you know, now that all the new guidelines are being put in for the school, right, they're super restrictive and, and a lot of parents, they did some recent survey. A lot of parents have decided that uh, they're going to uh, not send their children back to public schools, that it's too restrictive and too weird and they're going to homeschool their children. And because... They don't want to send their kids into some like weird environment where they can't they can't be close to their friends. They can't hug one another. They they have to bring their own like that's I guess that's one of the weird requirements of the new for the new school year is is the kids can't even share like their their ball to like play balls with like. Like who wants to send their kid to a, to school like that? You're better off keeping them at home. But but if you're if if you're a, a broken family, how can you take care of your children, dude? You have to send them into this environment. And so now I think more so than ever, like if we're gonna if we're gonna say that we care about these communities and our communities and ourselves, the first community that we need to support and foster is the family that like it has to start with the family unit this this disenfranchisement is because the family unit is broken and it's not just the black community it's the it's the anglo community too it's the white community whose families who are, are broken it's, you know, it's, it's America's strife with alcoholism and drug addiction. And why is that? Why is America just plagued with, with drug addiction and alcoholism? Because of broken families, dude. You know, I would argue that, that 
the poverty of of the inner city family is a direct result of broken families. And I would argue that that drug addiction in the suburbs is a direct result of broken families. I, I think as a nation, the one thing that we need to realize is our main main problem is is children without two parents in the home. I, I, Maybe that's a little bit of a simplistic thing, but I don't know, man. I think it starts there, dude. And then that 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 empowerment of 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 fathers and mothers and children in the family structure that is what sets the tempo for when they move out of the house onto the street to their neighbor's house is. They've been instilled with values and they've been instilled with 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 family and, and love and support and, and unity. And so when they go and, and meet with their neighbors, hopefully their neighbors have that same family going on. Imagine a whole street. I mean, I live in a community full of families, dude, and it's totally mellow. And yeah, maybe that is the... Uh, Maybe that is the institutional nature of what we're facing is, is, is because I live in an area of, of families, our area is mellow. And maybe that, maybe that really is what's going on here. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe the cops are, are, are just a scapegoat, a symptom of something much bigger. All by design, right? All by design, dude. Because... I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. As I sit here and and build with these Legos, dude, it's like I said, it's like I don't know what I'm building. Like I have no idea what this is, dude. But I'm putting something together. I don't know, man. I'm super hopeful for the future. I I, I seem to think it seemed I was kind of worried about tonight. I thought tonight might just devolve into some sort of nationwide madness. I mean, there was a certain level of it, but it it didn't take on a thing because the one thing I know is, like I started saying in the beginning, it's easier to destroy something than it is to rebuild it. And trust me, as a carpenter, right? As a carpenter, right? So there's two kinds of jobs you get as a carpenter. There's the job where you build what's from from the ground up, where you start with basically a clean slab of concrete. Just a clean slab of concrete. And then there's remodels. And I'll tell you what, building a house from the ground up on a clean slab of concrete is, is way easier than remodeling a house. Remodeling a house sucks. It's dirty, it's hard, you, you cut your fingers a lot, it's filthy. But building a house from the ground up is much easier. And so I guess that's the way I look at this thing is, is, is why do we want to remodel the, the structures? Like it's much easier to, to change the attitude of the occupants, I guess is what I'm saying. It's sort of a bad analogy. I, I get that, dude. I don't know, man. I have a lot of mixed feelings about what's going on right now. As, as I'm like, I, I empathize and I'm horrified at the same time, man. I don't, I don't like seeing destruction. Destruction, I, it doesn't serve a purpose except the devil, dude. The devil wants destruction. The devil wants us to destroy ourselves. The devil wants nothing more than me to take a bottle of alcohol and stick it to my lips and destroy my life, dude. That's what the devil wants. It's hard to stay sober. It's hard to overcome the obstacles of life, dude. But once you're empowered, and maybe this is a giant empowerment. Maybe there's a giant empowerment going on. I sure hope so. 
I sure hope this isn't a bunch of people who have who have gone into the streets for a, a righteous cause, committed an unrighteous act, and then are left there with the wreckage of an unrighteous act and then fall into despair. I, I worry. That's that's what I worry about when I see what the actions are in a in a place like Minneapolis. I think those people three weeks from now are going to be bummed, super bummed about what what happened. I think that I think it seems like a, a. I think that I think it seems justified right now because once again, their community member was murdered at the hands of of an authoritarian power. The Constitution was not upheld. You know, it's pretty simple like that. The constitutional rights of that community have been constantly violated and they took action and they took matters in their own hand. I seem to think it might have been a trick, though. We'll see. We'll see. But, you know, you really feel for people that are going to wake up two weeks from now and, and it's going to be hot and muggy in Minneapolis. It's going to be hot muggy in Minneapolis and they're not going to have any stores to get ice from and and fix their air conditioners or all the stuff that you take for granted like you don't know how what you need until it's gone I mean I'll tell you that I think we all learned that during this uh this coof thing was yeah, you you don't you don't really think about what it is that that makes up a community till everything's shut down and you're like, oh wow, like yeah, you need that and you need that. I don't even go to that store, but like it needs to like be working. So I think we're good. I think this community out there is gonna have gonna realize like, oh my goodness, like we've really hampered ourselves because. You know, the process of rebuilding Minneapolis is going to take years. Years. And that period between the time of the construction being over and the cleaning up of it is is, is a long journey, man. I, I mean, I look, look. Like my community burned down a year and a half ago, right? 500 homes burned down in, in Malibu a year and a half ago. And they just finished rebuilding the first house last week. Like a year and a half later, it took a year and a half to build, build back the first house. And this is a, this is an, a totally like streamlined, rich community. It took a year and a half to build back the first house. So you think about some community that, that already had economic disparities and now all of it's been leveled. I, I don't know, what are those these people gonna do two months from now? What is the community of Minneapolis gonna do two months from now when they can't go to the... Uh, the supermarket, they can't go to the bank, they can't go to the, the Dollar Tree or the barber shop or the local bar. Like there's nothing there anymore, man. And yeah, so it seems, it seems like a righteous thing to do. It's been a powder keg there for years, but you know, all the people that made that a, an, an unlivable situation they don't live down there. So who did they really who did they really help? Or or what did they what have they done, man? I, I like I'm concerned for those people. More so than I was, yeah, maybe I didn't think twice about them last week. But now that I look the, up what's going on, all those people in the streets burning stuff down and rioting, like, I'm kind of concerned about them because, like, they're not going to have any, any, how are they going to, how are they going to, how are they going to just take care of their basic necessities, man? Where are they going to get their diapers and 
and and formula or whatever it is to raise their children with. I, I just, ah, it's, it's a lot, man. Because see, what, like I can get all empathetic about the why. I get it. I get why people are pissed. I think I feel more for them because I know what it's like to live in a destroyed community. Last year was brutal, man. Last year in Malibu, living in the rubble of my community was brutal, man. It was, it sucked. So these people, yeah, they, they got their, their anger out. They got their, they got their just anger out of their system. But I think they're going to wake up from their hangover in a couple weeks and be like, Oh my God, my life just got way more difficult because those, those people, because of their economic status, like where, where are they going? Like, where are they going? Like, I don't understand the logic of it. Like it, it, it bums me out, man. Not because like, I'm like, I don't know. Does it, does it affect me and my little, like, my little suburban world, not really, but it affects me as a human being with empathetic concerns about my fellow citizen. Cause now like, ah, I don't know. Now, now what man? Now what dude? I mean, we're all, there's already 40 million unemployed people in this country right now. Now what now? Where, where did the word that's not like they can just get up and leave now like the entire country's like in an economic standstill like there's 40 million people that need a job so like if you're in minneapolis and and, and where, where are you going now for your job because everybody else needs one too it's just ah uh, it's bad i i i think that i think i think those people are gonna gonna wake up in a couple weeks and be like, oh, oh, what have we done, dude? What have we done to ourselves? And then it's going to be too late. It already is too late, man. It's gnarly. It's, it's, it's that thing as a person who works with, with alcoholics and drug addicts, like there's nothing you can do to stop them. There's nothing you can do to stop the, uh, the alcoholic who wants to go like destroy their life with drugs and alcohol. There's nothing you can do, man. And then you watch them do it and you're like, Oh, you don't want to be doing that, bro. Like seriously, man, you do not want to stick that needle in your arm, dude. You do not want to crack open that, that pint of whiskey. And then, and then they do and they're, you know, they get hit by a car uh, something bad happens, you know, and, and you knew it was coming and you knew that there was nothing you could say to stop them. And it's like, I think that's, I saw, I'm, I watched that last night or today. I, I watched people like destroying their own futures and, and basically hog tying themselves even even into a more deprived situation yeah it was it was bad dude the the racism of the cops and the abuse of the police like i get it man like screw that but now now it's now it's something else for them dude because now it's their own doing you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's one thing to have a bunch of cops and lame politicians bringing their ugly, ugly energy down on you. It's another thing to have destroyed your own, your own stuff. And there's no one to blame now. Like, yeah, once all that, like, oh, it's, you know, the brutal cops thing. Once that, that goes away, who are you going to blame now? Who are you going to look at now except yourself in the mirror? But maybe that's what it's all about. I don't know. I know that that's what I, I guess that's the thing is that when I grew the most as a human being is when I burned down my own life, man. Okay. I mean, I guess it makes some sort of sense. 
I learned more about myself as a human being when I burned down my own life, when I cratered my own life, destroyed my own life. I finally learned what it was to be a man. All right, maybe that's what, maybe that's what that community's doing for itself, is, is figuring out how to rebuild itself from the ground up to be a, a leaner, meaner, better machine. I don't know. I hope so. I hope that that's what's in store for that community. I hope that they they come out of this thing and, and gain the same thing I gained through sobriety as became a better person. Seems like a stretch though, man. Seems 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 like seems like a stretch to me, dude. But you know, I'm gonna pray. I think we all need to just pray for that those those people tonight. Those people have made some some very funky decisions and I don't think they really understand what they've done. It it yeah, it seems like a party right now. A party of yeah, rage, but once that buzz wears off, I don't know, dude. I mean we've all we've all had we've all had fights with our wives. We've all had fights with our husbands. That after that 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 whether you were right or wrong, it really doesn't matter when the uh when everybody goes to, to sleep angry and alone, does it, man? Because no one no one can no one goes to sleep with you except God, man. And and if you've acted in the in the name of the devil, dude, you gotta go to sleep alone, dude. And God's sitting there like like, come on, are you going to, like, confess your ways to me, or are you just going to go to sleep alone? I don't know, man. It's a lot, dude. It's a lot. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I feel for people right now. And... Number bag three... Because, you know, I'll tell you one of my, my favorite sounds is the sound of breaking glass. I love the sound of breaking glass. I get it. I'm a thrasher, dude. See, I don't know, man. I've done my fair share of destruction in this life. I've, I've destroyed a bunch of things. Like I said, I destroyed my own life at a, on a certain level. And I'll tell you what, the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life was rebuild my life. And then, then I had my life burned down last year, stone cold sober. And I'll tell you what, rebuilding my life a second time was super tough, dude. And I'm telling you, it's no easy journey right now. It's, it's, it's not all like, like roses. It's super hard, man. Like we have our own troubles going on dude this this scamdemic hasn't been easy on my little family no not not at all dude it's been super stressful and it's caused all sorts of friction and chaos and but the constant rebuilding right the constantly rebuilding and reevaluating and re, re, reconstituting it all into a different form and, and getting up and starting over again and being like, okay, man, I'm going to, I'm going to get up and I'm going to start over again today, dude. Uh, yeah, yesterday was, uh, was a dumpster fire, but today I'm going to get up and I'm going to try again, man. I'm going to try again today. That's hard. That's a skill you learn, dude. That's not that's not something that that you're just like naturally tuned to do is to like get up every day and, and regroup and rebuild. It's like you got to learn it, man, because that skills based upon forgiveness and all sorts of stuff. It's a gift from God, I suppose, on on its simplest level. I'm glad I'm doing this, man. This is making me feel better. My wife got super mad at me today about like watching the uh, 
watching the riots. She's like, you're watching the Lunars, dude. They're watching the crazy people. And I'm like, I got it. It's like, I need to, I need to feel, I like, there's a part of me, like, I don't want to be disconnected from humanity. I don't want to pretend that there aren't people out there in pain. I, I think there's a certain mentality in our, in our society of like, just, just look the other way and it'll go away. Like, I don't believe that. I, I believe that the only way that you solve a problem is to look at, look at it with honesty and truth and, and be like, oh my God, that's, that's gnarly, dude. Yeah, we're here. I, I just hope we can rise to the occasion as a society, as a humanity. I think we can do it. I really do believe that, that as much as it looked like a really doom and gloom situation yesterday morning, I, I really think we can pull this together. I think we can come out of this thing a better society. We, we do need to, we do need to reform the police and how the police interact with human beings because the police don't respect anyone's constitutional rights, man. And I also think that, that we do need to, to address these broken communities and why they're broken. It's not, it's, I think it's too simple to go. It's a racial issue. I think that's, I think that's dumbing it down, dude. I've, you know, I don't, I want to stay, I want to stay, I'm going to stay out of the political bend on it, but I think it's obvious at this point. I think it's super obvious of, of who's orchestrating this, these impoverished communities, man. I'm going to come out with a whole video about it tomorrow, dude, because I'm not, I'm not going to sit back silently while while people perpetrate their injustices on these communities, man. Because at this point, like we need to stand up for these communities, man. And it, it is one group of people that is, is terrorizing these communities, man. And it's super obvious. I don't need to, I don't need to mention it. We all, we all know who's terrorizing this community. It's not, it's not a racial issue. It is a power issue. They, they want to make it into a racial issue. But I, again, I, I, the one thing that is, that, that's been super kind of inspiring me, me in a weird way is, is watching the footage and seeing that there's white people and brown people and black people all riding together, dude. You know what I mean? There isn't, there isn't any, there aren't any hate crimes going on. I, I, I thought, you know, I was worried about that for a moment. I thought that, uh, I thought it was going to go like that for a minute. So I, I've, I've sort of been somewhat grateful that it's, that maybe we'll find a unity in this. I think, I think after the way that the cops and the, the government overreached during this, this, this coof that, uh, I think people are pretty unified on the fact that the, uh, the power structure is illegitimate in this nation now. They've overstepped their constitutional rights and uh, our constitutional rights, and they need to be put into check. So yeah, if this is how we got to go about doing it, I don't really like it. I would like a way more constructive way, but if this is what we got to do to uh, get the man off our back, I guess that's what we got to do. Maybe that's what comes of this. Maybe that's what comes of this. Again, I, I, I tend to want to be an optimist about all these things. I, I want to believe in the best of humanity. I truly think that human beings are kind and loving deep down inside of themselves. I don't think that that your average human wants to be angry and frustrated. I think that that is a result of, of not being heard and not being treated with respect. And, and yeah, that seems to be what's going on. People aren't being treated with respect and that just isn't right, man. But there's a way to do it. I mean, I keep laying out the same thing of, of how to, how to do it. 
And it's not idealistic. Like I said, I've been down there banging my head against the wall at City Hall for nine years. But I've gotten some stuff done. I've gotten some stuff done. I haven't sat back silently. I'm losing steam on this thing. I don't know what this thing is, by the way. I'm totally lost in what I'm doing. Like, I really don't know what it is I'm even making. Some sort of weird square thingamajiggy. I'm going to save the last bag for Owl tomorrow, dude. He'll be bummed if, it, if I make this and I don't include him on some sort of level. That's, that's being a dad, right? Because it's not all about me. Like, I do have to be like, yeah, dude, my son would be bummed if he walked in here, saw a brand new Lego set all built, and, and I didn't build some of it with him, right? So I'm going to finish this number bag up, and then... And then uh, I'm going to call it call it good. I'm worn out, man. Today was today was exhausting. I was I was I got to admit I was pretty nervous about how it was going to go today. Cuz like I said, I I truly believe in people, man. I I really do. I truly do believe in 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 people. And I want the best for people, man. So yeah, I don't like seeing I don't like seeing the worst in people, that's for sure. When you want the best in people, you definitely don't want to see the worst in people. I don't know if that makes sense what I just said, but I don't did I is this right? Wait, hold on. I guess that's right. It just pops right in there. It ties a lot of pieces together. Interesting. I wonder what that thing is. Oh, look at that click. 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 Clickety, clickety, clack. Clickety, clickety, clack. Ah. Oh. All right, where's this thing I'm supposed to click in there? All right, it's, it says it's going to be a big click. That was a click. That was a big click. All right, wait. Oh, there it goes. It goes right. Huh. I wonder what that thing is. No, it's like getting involved here. What, what am I making here? I go in like this. Oops, I was supposed to put some sort of flywheel in there. Uh, see, it's hard building stuff, dude. I made a mistake. How am I going to undo that? Sure. It's just a Lego, but it's still hard to build. There we go. Boom. All right. Oh, it's all sorts of involved right now. Oh. Oh, interesting. Some sort of gear works in there. Huh. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, man. I, I feel fatigued. I'm fatigued. I'm I'm worn out, man. This this whole thing's been going on far too long. This whole whole weird years. This has been ex this is exhausting. I'm calling it out. Uh, where's the piece? I don't see the piece.
Ah, oh, there it is. Never came out of the bag. Legos never not have the piece in it. I've never had a set with missing a piece. It's kind of amazes me. Sort of amazing if I don't say so myself. If Lego can be such a perfect corporation, I know that the world can work pretty flawlessly. If Lego can do it, so can we. So can the humans. Lego's just a, a human made endeavor like if the lego corporation can do it so can we man that's my main like thing about legos make me believe in humanity dude like it really does i've like i'm sitting here right now and i'm like why not why not You can build anything with Lego. So you can rebuild the world. If the Lego system works flawlessly, so does everything. So does everything, man. So does everything, my dudes and dudettes. We can build a world, new world. Yeah, I guess that's it, man. Maybe this is the beginning of the new reality, the new paradigm, if you will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an optimist. Like I said, I was pretty worried earlier today. I was like, ugh, this could get gnarly, dude. This could really get bad. But we might have gotten over that hump. We might be into the new energy field. I would sure be nice. I, I would sure be nice to get on the uh, the big rebuild energy field. Maybe this is the transition, the dealing with the Watiko, right? The mind virus, the collective mind virus known as the Watiko. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe we gotta maybe we gotta get the poison out of our system, right? Just just get the poison out of our system. Maybe it's a good time to do it, dude. Just no time like the present, right? No time like the present. All right. No time like the present. Deep thoughts with the illusion. That's all I got, man. That's all I got, dude. Yeah, the Lego channel's been running simultaneously at the at the same time. So, on that note, thanks everyone for being here. It was an hour. I'm good for an hour on this thing. The uh, so if you guys could do me a favor. Right, I'm going to stop the Lego channel first before I ask this favor. All right, there we go. Part one of this. I'm finishing up the Lego channel. Let's end that.